Now, Deputy Prime Minister Chen Liu Quang expressed his hope that Vietnam and the U.S. will deepen cooperation across spheres, making it on pair with their comprehensive strategic partnership, while receiving Senator Kristen Gillibrand, chairwoman of the U.S. Senate Committee on Armed Service a Subcommittee on Emerging Threats and Capabilities in Hanoi on Wednesday. Deputy Prime Minister Chen Liu Kuang said he believes that Senator Gillibrand's visit will contribute to enhancing mutual understanding and trust and promoting the relations between the two countries and their legislatures. Minister Kuang called on U.S. congressmen to raise a strong voice so that the U.S. government will soon recognize Vietnam's market economy status. The two sides shared the view on the importance of maintaining peace, stability, security, and safety of navigation and overflight, and settling disputes by peaceful measures on the basis of international law. The U.S. delegation highly valued Vietnam's stance on the EC issue. Gillibrand and other delegation members expressed the impression of Vietnam's outstanding development and thanked the country for its supply for medical equipment during the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Vietnamese tuna products have been exported to more than 80 markets around the world during the opening two months of the year, 10 more markets compared to the same period last year, according to the Vietnam Association of Seafood Exporters and Producers. Most notably, tuna export to the members of the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership have witnessed vigorous growth. February 2024 alone saw tuna export to Canada and Chile skyrocket by 146% and 116% respectively. Meanwhile, after experiencing a strong increase in January, tuna export to major markets such as the United States and the EU in February dropped 8% and 16% respectively. The Vietnamese Cultural Center in France repre uh, represented Vietnam at Francophone Weekend on March 23rd to 24th, which was held in celebration of the 5th International Francophone Day 2024 in France. This year's event, the 5th of its kind, hosted nearly 40 booths of members of the international organization of La Francophonie, French localities and associations. Vietnam was a guest of honor of this year's edition. Adorned with the national flag, the pavilion of Vietnam drew the attention of many event goers. Publications on the country's tourist attractions, along with souvenirs and traditional musical instruments, were on display. Besides, a special art program and traditional outside fashion show were also held during the two day event. Vietnam is selected as a guest of honor of this year's event because the country has always actively participated in all past editions of the city's International Francophonie Day. Now, the Vietnamese movie Mai, directed by comedian Chen Thanh, has brought in 22.1 million US dollars in revenue, recording the 16th highest revenues in the 2024 worldwide box office, according to Box Office Mojo of the global box office tracking site of IMDb. Deadline.com revealed that from 154 theaters in North America, 917,000 U.S. dollars and added a further 133,000 from 40 sites in the U.K., France, Germany, Norway, Czech Republic, Slovakia and Poland. It noted that beginning on March the 22nd, specialty distributor 3388 Films released the movie in nearly 200 theaters in nine countries throughout North America and Europe, marking the widest same-day theatrical release ever for a Vietnamese movie across the two continents. This marks the third film from Chen Tang, whose previous movie Bo Zha earned 1.3 million US dollars in the US in 2021 to become the top Vietnamese produced movie ever in that market. Now, also modern culture has been present in every corner of mountainous homeless. The passion for melodies of Khen or Pen Pai has never ceased among men of the Hmong ethnic group. Mu Mi Tu was on in 1985 and is well-known maker of Khen Pan Pies, played by the Hmong ethnic minority people in Dongban District, the northern mountainous province of Ha Giang. 
with a great passion for the Khan since he was a little boy. Thor now makes the instrument not only for himself but also for others. The sound of Khan plays a significant role in local spiritual culture. The making of the instrument, however, is at risk of disappearing, so I decided to master the trade and became a Khan artisan. Modern life is present in every corner of this mountainous area. When old Khan artisans step aside, it's time for young Hmong men to keep the fire going and ensure the sound of the Khan can still be heard. To make a good Khan, artisans use Hinuki wood for the side and six bamboo tubes of different lengths and diameters inserted into it. Dongwan district has held several traditional festivals in recent times and promoted the trees of local minority people in order to preserve and strengthen their cultural values and those of Hmong everywhere.